Yeah, so this is a, a learning short, um, and we have Patrick Straw from Canasa, and uh, we've been having some great discussions in the last few months about all the uh, fantastic offerings that Canasa has. Uh, before we talk about Canasa, I just want to introduce uh, Patrick a little bit. He's been in the security industry his whole life. He started as a police officer, he moved into uh, private security practice with a number of companies, and um, most recently, he's the executive director of Canasa, which is the Canadian Security Association. Thanks for joining me today, Patrick. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about Canasa and what uh, Canasa is and what they do? Absolutely. So Canasa was started back in the 70s by a group of senior people in the industry um, in many parts of Canada. In fact, most parts of Canada, our industry is not regulated in many ways. So uh, it was a group of you know, well-intentioned people that decided that we needed a, to have a voice for our industry right across the country. So over a, a lot of time and a lot of hard work, Canasa has grown to be a national organization. We represent about a thousand security companies across Canada. We are, we have a few primary objectives as an association. One of them is that we work very closely with the uh, authorities having jurisdiction as representatives of our industry. So for example, I sit on the private sector liaison for the Canadian Association of Chiefs of Police, the Ontario Association of Chiefs of Police. And we work with any of the provincial solicitor generals when there's issues regarding alarm policies and security policies to try to have a voice so that our members are represented correctly. Secondly, we work on educational resources because our industry is generally not regarded as a trade. We have a huge problem right now, right across Canada. If I had 100 guys that were skilled technicians, I could retire on the amount of money that I could broker them for because there's simply everybody's got tons of work and there's not enough skilled people. So we're working with colleges in different provinces. We're about to launch a, a security technician course at Conestoga College in, uh, in Waterloo, which is a big, big uh, win for us. We also have an online course, which we've just upgraded the uh, ATC course, which is the alarm technicians course that's sponsored by Canasa, um, and we try to provide educational um, opportunities. Obviously with COVID for the last little bit, it's been very restrictive. So we have done a lot of stuff online, but we, we, uh, we provide uh, events uh, with guest speakers and learning opportunities and training opportunities. So, I mean, uh, and then the third part of it is sort of the social aspect of it. We, you know, you're in an industry with a lot of medium to small businesses, they work by themselves. They don't really feel like they're part of something and so we have some great regional councils right across the country we have committees that work on different things like membership education um you know government relations um and yeah we have a have a really really great unification of our industry and when covid started uh it really came to the forefront the amount of uh zoom calls we were doing weekly with for example our monitoring station group where Big companies were helping small companies working on best practices. We publish a lot of information on best practices for a variety of different security protocols. And that in kind of a nutshell is, is what we're all about. Yeah, you know, it's um, in our discussions, I, I really uh, found that uh, Canasa is quite a spectacular national organization in that respect. But um, We've had talks about, um, you know, some of the different systems and alarm systems and this kind of stuff in, in the, the last few months. And um, there is some information that'd be super valuable for jewelers. Uh, in particular, uh, what would be the most reliable uh, type of system for a jeweler to get? Not, um, not brand uh, specific, but components in particular. Very confusing for people that aren't in our industry, and uh, and it's it's something that uh, even when I you know when I used to train young guys coming into the business to get their head around what it is. So in Canada, most high security facilities, which a jewelry store would obviously be considered, have requirements for their security as dictated by their insurance company. So Underwriters Laboratory of Canada, which is kind of the governing body of that um, they've just finished also writing standards which i was involved with for the cannabis industry on behalf of health canada so what happens is when a guy is opening a, a man or a woman is opening a jewelry store they they want to have insurance and in most cases the insurance companies will specifically lay out what type of system they could get and it's based on ulc designations so it doesn't describe the equipment that they are supposed to use 
but it decides exactly what kind of equipment it should be. And it's fairly detailed in how the equipment should, should be applied. Where it's very confusing is that people say ULC approved. Well, almost every product that's sold in our industry is a ULC approved product because they're tested just like CSA tests them right. and, and all this. But a, a ULC certified system means that not only the equipment is, is certified by ULC, but also the application of the equipment. Right. So when I used to sell ULC systems to pharmaceutical logistic facilities, I'd get an eight page report from their insurance company, or in some cases I already knew after I had a lot of experience, and I would have to design a security system that met these requirements. And before I would sell it to them, I would make sure that I either, a lot of times I would meet with their insurance company with them to make sure that before they go spend a whole bunch of money, that they're gonna be meeting the objectives. And this even happens in high-end homes and other types of businesses, car dealerships, where there's very high priced inventory that's very theftable. Right. So that's kind of the, and, and if somebody in your organization is interested in getting into a little bit deeper. We have a really good relationship at the Canadian Security Association with ULC. We have uh, one of their senior people in Canada on our board of directors, so they're always available to us. Um, but on the alarm system part, the things that it, it, it tells you, for example, in a space, how far a, an intruder could step before they're detected by a motion sensor. Mm -hmm. So perimeter openings will have to have, um, and there's different levels depending on the value of the inventory, but it will tell you things like that. It'll also tell you what type of a communication pathway is required to go from the control panel in the facility to a monitoring station. So a lot of homes are just basically Wi-Fi or what's called passive digital, which means if somebody cuts off the communication, they're out of business until the next auto test, which might be 12 hours later. Usually with, uh, with ULC systems, both for intrusion and fire, um, there are a lot higher security protocols in place where if a wire is cut, it, it's detected immediately at the other end or within a, all of the regulations will say, you know, a line fault might have to be detected within 30 seconds or a minute, depending on what the circumstances are. That's fantastic. Um, so the, the key, one of the, the key things I'm getting from this is that they need to be working with their insurance company all the way along. Yeah. So alarm companies that sell ULC are certified, they're certified ULC approved alarm companies. So there's lots of alarm companies that do fantastic work, but in order to become certified, you have to have inspections done on some of your installations. You have to keep a very detailed paper trail on your files so that they can come in once a year and they can not only audit uh, your files on your ULC approved systems, but they might wanna see printouts from your monitoring station computer showing how alarm systems were processed in the event of an alarm that might've happened at any time since the last time you were inspected. So it is a, so the first thing for a jeweler is uh, you find out what your insurance company's requirements are, and then you need to find a ULC approved security company to quote on it. And the easiest way to do that is most companies who are ULC approved, they will have it on their website or you can Google it and probably find some, or ULC could very probably give you a list of the approved companies within their own, within your own jurisdiction, depend on where you are. Right. Where you have to be careful though, is that a lot of the companies that are using ULC approved monitoring stations, the systems themselves are not ULC approved, yeah. but they always advertise that your house will be monitored in a ULC approved monitoring station, which is fantastic because that means that the monitoring station is guaranteed to be following the highest standards of how they process alarms, but that alarm system doesn't meet the same standards as a high security one that would go in a jewelry facility. So you wanna be making sure that not only the component parts are ULC, but also the monitoring is everything from A to Z is ULC. A few times in my career, I went to a guy who had spent $10,000 on an alarm system, beautiful alarm system, but he didn't know anything about this. His insurance company come in, comes in and says, that's no good. You know, yeah. so you had to spend a whole bunch of money to upgrade it, which in a lot of cases is it could have all have been prevented ahead of time. You know, yeah. and most people, most people in the jewelry industry get that, um, you know, there's nothing too much, too romantic. There's some really cool video and access control and different products. Alarm systems are a very, you know, workhorse functional thing that's turned on when you leave. In some cases, parts of the building are protected while people are still there. It can be segmented into, you know, different different areas, partitions, they call it. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. So um, where like this is 
uh, absolutely spectacular information. But for a jeweler, you mentioned that um, uh, you know the the insurance company is great for information, but where can they go for the latest and greatest information on uh, security and surveillance equipment? Well, Father Google is always a good place to go. Um, you know, and I, I think personally in my career, when I met with companies that were interested in buying something off me, most good security integrators carried, carried several lines of product to fit into all of the market categories. So for example, I would go and say, look, I'm gonna show you what my offering is um, for a ULC approved facility. We're gonna recommend this camera line, which we've been using for years. It's more expensive than the ones that we put in homes and in donut shops, but it's much higher. The resolution on the cameras, the amount of manipulation that you have in the software with analytics and different things is a lot better. And most camera systems now have the ability for you to have an app on your phone. You can check in on your facility at any time to see what's going on, even if you have staff working and you're not there. Um, and I know that, you know, that you can Google and find out stuff, but you know, Everything looks fantastic on the internet. Um, and I think that maybe, I'm, I'm a very strong believer that find three or four companies in your area, get them to come in and make a presentation to you. Now you're gonna have some product names that they have given you. You can now do a little bit of your own research. You can look for you know approvals online from different companies. And, and that's a good way to do it. Uh, there's a lot of great products. You know, video is such a, uh, you know, when we do our shows now, you know, there could be 15 or 20 camera companies there with fantastic products, you know, and they're all made for different levels of, 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 of things. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of different softwares because the software component has become huge now. Right. So I guess that's, um, um, that actually brings me to the next question that I had for you. What would be the key items that a jeweler should look for in a surveillance system? So obviously having a professional tell you um, the right location for the cameras. A lot of times people that aren't in our industry, they, for example, they'll have it pointed at the sales counter from behind. And so you have a beautiful picture of your own staff in the back of their head. You know, if you go into banks, you'll notice now they always have the cameras behind the tellers looking at you. And you have to make sure that those kind of things are thought through. I mean, obviously, having a good look at anybody that comes through the door, having outside perimeter where you can see vehicles and different things is huge. Um, and then inside, you know, making sure that the key areas where something could potentially happen, just like in a lot of retail facilities, it's good to have uh, spot monitors that show the people that there's a, there's a camera system, you know, don't hide the cameras. And my personal feeling is that you make it really obvious that this whole place is covered by video surveillance. So everything you're doing, we can see. You know, it's it's kind of ironic right now where we're all walking into jewelry stores and banks with masks on, but hopefully that's going to end soon. But, you know, the location of the cameras and then, you know, when I sold cameras, I had a few of my customers who allowed me to have access to their cameras on my phone so I could actually show them this is the quality of the camera that this system is going to give you. Right. Um, so you can there's no mystery left. And if you go on, you know, if you've got a camera brand you're interested in and you go on YouTube now. Uh, you can see every company has endless pages where you can actually see the exact camera that you've been okay. quoted, what the picture is going to look like. So you're not disappointed at the end of the day. That's spectacular. Um, this has just been um, a phenomenal um, segment of information that you provided uh, for the jewelers. And um, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to share all this uh, with us. Um, before we go, uh, is there any other resources on the Canasa website that uh, jewelers can tap into? So on our website, it's primarily geared towards our own members. There is the ability to go in and do a search for companies geographically, and it's very unintuitive because it's not meant to just give you a wide list. I would like to tell your, your jewelers that if any of them wanted to contact me, uh, I'm comfortable with you giving out my email address. I, I really am infrequently contacted by people outside of our own industry, and I certainly am happy at any time to share, you know, any information. Again, I, I have to be very careful not to be brand specific, to be politically correct, but uh, to give people some, you know, good advice as maybe the first place to go to start. Um, and, and, you know, it's about doing your homework. And I think you'll find that if you have two or three or four companies come in, you'll be able to tell and I always ask for references, you know, 
so many things can look fantastic with great marketing. Uh, you know, all the products look fantastic, but I want to know the last two or three jewelers that you dealt with and give me their names. I'd like to call them up and ask them how happy they are with your service. Um, yeah. You know, that, that, that's really important because you, you're not, you're not like a donut shop. You're protecting, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of inventory and you're potentially, you know, you have to get into things like, uh, you know, hold up alarms and a lot of different technologies, which are a little bit more complicated than people think because there are a lot of safety factors involved. Yes. And so, you know, you need to know that you're dealing with somebody who knows what they're talking about. Well, this is fantastic. What, what we're going to do is we'll send a bulletin out and we'll share uh, the Canassi information and we'll uh, share your, your email and, um, expect a tsunami of uh of uh contacts <laughs> you know what i've been working from home for 15 months i would love a tsunami of contacts from the jewelers and jewelry industry that would be just fine awesome okay well thanks again patrick and uh, uh have a fantastic day and uh, really appreciate your time again so just one last thing kelly and i really appreciate you guys introducing us to your membership is that when we do have our in-person shows which this in 2022 will probably be Laval, BC or Vancouver, and then Toronto, you and your colleagues from the, from your organization are more than welcome. Make sure you reach out to me. I'll get you passes. That's and you fantastic. Can come in and do a walk about it. It'll give you a pretty eye opener about all the stuff that's available. That's absolutely a fantastic offer. Thanks, Patrick. And of course, everybody's going to see this as well. We'll share that with everybody as well. Have a fantastic day and uh, we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. Hey, that was awesome.